Right now we're going to have a, a scripture reading, unless somebody has a, uh, another prayer request. If not, uh, my brother Tom right here, uh, this man is growing by leaps and bounds, and, and Tom is going to do the scripture reading today, okay? You will be, God will be glorified through listening to this. <clears throat> okay, we're here on Psalm 105, and I understand it's from David, and I'll just start. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done, sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of all his wonderful acts, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his faith always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles, and the judgments he pronounced. You, his servants, the descendants of Abraham, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever, the promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. He confirmed it to Jacob as a decree, to Israel as an everlasting covenant. To you I will give the land of Canaan as the portion you will inherit. Amen. Thank you, Brother Tom. Appreciate that very much. So, God will give us the means to walk along his path. But we, but we must do the walking. Okay? Like we've talked about several times, we've got to take that step. To have something happen, you have to take that step. So, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer right now. Okay, folks? Father, we just, uh, we just lift you up, Lord. And we know these miracles that have taken place. And I don't know, Lord God, sometimes these are starting to be so common to us, Lord God. We, sometimes maybe we take it for granted. But, Father, I want to tell you right now, we don't take it for granted. We know we stand in awe of you, Lord God, and what you're doing and what you've done in the people's lives, Lord how you give us peace, how you give us understanding, how you give us the ability, Lord God, to love one another only that way that you could give us. We can't love, Lord God, without you, Father. And thank you for that so much. That's a miracle in itself. The miracle of salvation, Lord God, that you gave us through your son, Jesus Christ. I am so grateful and so thankful, Lord God, to be one of those few, Lord God, that was able to say, forgive me of my sins. I need you in my life. And my prayer today right now, Lord God, is if there's anyone around that needs you as their Lord and Savior, before this service is over with, Lord, that they would commit their lives unto you, that they would serve you all the days of their life, serve you faithfully, Lord God, to pray to you, Lord God, to save them. I pray, Lord God, for each, each, each prayer request, Lord God, that was given. I thank you, Lord God, for the ones that have been answered. There are so many. And those are the miracles that we're talking about. I pray, Lord God, for the ones that are hurting, Lord God. I think about Larry. I think about the ones that need to be healed, Lord God. But those things, Lord God, you have them under control. And we give them, we lift them up unto you, and Lord God, as we praise you today in this service, Lord, we lift those things unto you, Lord God. We give them out of our heart unto you to be able to, uh, you to minister to, to heal, to touch, Lord God, in any way you see fit. But we give them to you, Father God, each and every one. I think of my brother, Lord God. I always have to think about Larry, Lord God, as he's lost his love of his life, Lord. But man, I tell you what, that guy, he encouraged me, Lord. He encouraged me the other day after he had lost his wife. 
He gave me encouragement. He ministered to me after he had that, that had happened. What a relationship, Lord. That's what it's all about, knowing without a shadow of a doubt, knowing that we know that she is in heaven. She is, she is having a blast today. Maybe her body was out without that leg, and maybe the, she was on dialysis, but no more. No more, and we praise you, and we thank you for that, Father. This is a wonderful day to be in the house of the Lord, and I pray, Lord, that you would be glorified in it, and each person here would be touched by the Spirit of God before they leave today. If you need healing, folks, he's here. If it is in your mind, is it in your spirit, or your physical body, He is here. Listen to the words that are saying today. Let them speak to your heart. Don't say no when God's telling you yes. Listen to what pastor has to say today. Because those words will minister to you. Don't say no. When the Lord is telling you, yes, go. Make that step. Walk that walk with your Lord and Savior. And you'll never regret it. Never regret it. I promise. So Lord, we just thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for what is about to occur. And we give you all the praise and glory. It's in your son's name, Jesus Christ, that we pray these things. Amen. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments? Spotless are they white as snow Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansion? And be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Yes, praise the Lord I have found His grace is all every need while I sit and learn at Jesus' feet I am free, yes free indeed it is joy unspeakable
there's just one thing that I want to say. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For all you've given to me. For all the blessings I cannot see. Stretched arms, I will bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Yeah. 
the weak become strong. His strength is perfect. His strength is perfect. Praise the Lord. God, praise God for that. His strength is perfect because mine is not. Mine is not. Amen. Lord, we just come before you today. Your creation, your humble servants, those you have blessed with your presence. God, it's incredible. It is incredible that the creator of the universe would grace us with your presence, your mercy, your forgiveness, and your healing touch. And so God, uh, we sometimes do, as, as Tom alluded to earlier, sometimes uh, we get a little comfortable with your presence and you're doing miracles and we're just kind of expecting it. But God, I pray that we would use everything that you do to bring you glory, to uh, to exalt your holy name and to let the people in the world who are stumbling around in darkness and wondering if there is any hope and any place they can go to find relief, to let them know, yes, there is. Let me tell you what my Jesus did. God, I thank you. You have, you have blessed us with abundance. Uh, You've blessed us with the opportunity to reach out to this community and to let them know that you love them and to provide for their needs in, in the physical realm and the spiritual realm. And so, God, thank you. Thank you. I do thank you that you're going to touch Richard, Amen. that uh, we're going to hear of your grace and your mercy and your glory in his life. So, Lord... Uh, just another opportunity to reach out and say, guess what my God did? Guess how much he loves you. Lord, we look around this world and there is chaos and confusion and hate and brutality. And people who have just lost hope because their hope was in something other than you. And so God, give us the words. And when words fail, Lord, give us the actions to let the world know of your great mercy and grace and love. May we be your servants every moment of our lives that God, we would see your healing come not only within the believers here in this congregation, but, Lord, outside these walls, may we see your spirit at work wherever we go because we carry you with us. We thank you for that. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. 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 Ushers come and we'll receive this morning's tithes and offerings.
That's right. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world can give, that's for sure. Wow. Oh, my. Well, if you were in Mark's Sunday school class this morning, we're going to continue it. All right? I don't know how that works out because I had no idea what they were doing in Sunday school class. But it does. It works out so many times. Uh, today, what I want to say is to those who may be a bit discouraged. And uh, kind of the way I designed this, if you aren't discouraged, maybe about halfway through you might be, but don't leave, okay? <laughs> All right? So I want to show us what's going on in our lives. But if you're hurting in your life right now, it's my prayer that what, what, what we look at in Haggai today will speak to you, and I know that there are many who are discouraged, both people here, people uh, listening online. Uh, today is the second part of just three messages from Haggai, so next week we'll wrap up Haggai, a really short book. Uh, if you missed last week, we're going to go over a little backstory, just so you'll understand the main story, and then we'll dive into the, the second of this uh, three-part series. And uh, obviously, I'm not going to finish in five minutes, so I hope your chicken's not overcooked when you get home, okay? If you missed last week, uh, we talked all the way back to King Solomon. You know, Solomon's temple, he built the most magnificent temple in all the world, and, uh, and he just did it for God. It was just mind-blowing. It was so magnificent. People would come from all around the world to see, just to see Solomon's temple. And unfortunately, we know that when, after King Solomon died, people turned away from God. We humans, we get distracted so easily, and, and the people started worshiping idols, and God allowed a series of events to take place just to try to turn the people back to him. And, and we talked about that last week, that uh, we talked about the destruction of the temple, and... Uh, we, we talked about in 587, uh, under the rule of King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the, uh, the Babylonian army dis destroyed, just completely devastated Judah, uh, including the massive insult of destroying the house of God that Solomon had built, uh, the temple. And the Babylonians took the Jewish people away into captivity. They, they kind of uh, lorded it over them for 20 years and then, and then took them away into captivity and held them for another 50 years in captivity. And you can just imagine the sense of relief and hope when after 50 years of being away from their home, the, some of them were allowed to return home, just a remnant of people, to go back to their homeland under the governor Zerubbabel. And about 50,000 or so people went to rebuild the city the first thing they wanted to do was to build a temple. And so they started on that. They got the foundation in place. They got the altar in place. There was some resistance, and the Samaritans were making fun of them. And guess what they did? They just gave up. And for 14 years, they didn't work on a temple. They just started building their own magnificent homes. And they forgot about the temple of God. And so God raised up this prophet, Haggai, to call the people back to the task. Hey, people, don't just focus on your houses. Start again. Rebuild the temple of God, the house of God. Let's put God first. And so with that context in mind, in Haggai chapter 9, verse 13 and 14, this is what the Scripture teaches us. It says that then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave this message of the Lord to the people, and he, and, and he said, the Lord tells the people, I am with you. Wow. I'll tell you what, to me, to my heart, that's probably the best news I could ever hear. I am with you. I am with you, God said. Can you say it with me? I am with you. And wow, what a, what a great deal there. And, and so then, you know, in verse 14, it says, So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of uh, Sheatiel, and, and <laughs> governor of Judah, spirit of Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest, 
and, and the spirit of the whole remnant of the people. What did God do? He, he stirred up the spirit of the governor, the high priest, and all of the people. I'll tell you something. If you are sensitive to the Lord, God will come at times in your life and he will stir up your spirit. Yeah, God will give you a hope to accomplish something that God puts on your mind. God did this for the people. He gave them a sense of faith. Hey, they're going around, hey, I guess we're supposed to rebuild the temple. He stirred up their spirits. And this will happen for followers of Jesus Christ. There will be those times like out of the blue, like I think, man, God told me to do this. And you have faith for something, and you, you want to attack it. That's because God is stirring your spirit. The story goes this way. It says, they came and they, they began to work on the house of the Lord Almighty, their God. They're going like, we can do this. We can build an amazing temple. We can do this. And then one month goes by, and guess what happened? They quit again. Yeah. Yeah. They quit again. One month later, they fizzle out. I'll tell you what happened. They had one of their big religious festivals, and, and all the people gathered around the temple construction site, and they're going like, is that all there is? Is that all we've accomplished? This is pathetic. We haven't done much at all. And all of a sudden, everybody got discouraged. And they were embarrassed. They were like, you know, well, we're trying to do our best, and look at this. We haven't accomplished hardly anything. And they just quit. One month in, they just quit. <laughs> we can do this. We can do this. We can do We can't do this. And they fizzled out. I mean, let's be honest. How often does that happen in our lives? Huh? I mean, we're, we're going to attack. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. And we flame out. Let me just get real, you know. Right, right on down to the meat of it this morning, Okay. I've done that in this church. I mean, I'm not saying I'm proud of it, okay? But I, I've had so many times I've been discouraged rather than encouraged when I drive by our property on University in Grangeville, okay? And I see a bunch of dirt. During the time we were on the road, I went through this kind of post-midlife crisis, you know? I'd go by the property and I'd, I'd just go like, When, Lord? When, Lord, and I'd see the housing that we were building at a standstill, and I'd complain to the Lord because we had a contractor, Arlen Hill, who had come over with an idea to help us raise the money to build the church. And we just got started, and he got cancer, and he, well, he got saved. <laughs> and, and so did his wife, and we baptized him, and just right after that, he passed away. And so the person who could help me do it all was gone right after we started. And I'm going like, Lord, have you brought us into this wilderness to die? I'd, I'd drive by there, I'd say, God, you're making us look foolish. I'm just being honest with you, okay? People are, people are looking and they're saying, oh wow, look at those people, they're a failure. We were expecting you guys to build a church, show up here in our neighborhood. I thought we'd be on that property a long time ago. You know how many times I drive by there and I just felt like quitting? I 
We're all like that to some degree. Okay? We can attack. We can build this temple. We can build. We can build this temple. And one month later to the day, because they were good at dating everything, one month later, they, they flame out. I don't know what it is for you. <laughs> Maybe it's, oh, we're going to get out of debt. We're going to get out of debt. We're going to get out of debt. Oh, I forgot about Christmas. Oh, my. Yeah, I guess we aren't going to get out of debt. Man. I'm going to go on a diet. I'll go on. I'm, I'm going to go on a diet. I'll... Well, cookies are half price. I'll do it later. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I'm going to go to the gym. Yeah, I, I, gym memberships are big at New Year's, you know. Yeah, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to go to the gym and... Well, you know, by Valentine's Day, nobody's around there. Yeah. We're going to do this, and then we don't make progress, the progress that we think we should make, and so we get discouraged. That's exactly what happened to the people of God. Well, we're going to do this for God. It's going to be amazing. And one month in, didn't go like they expected, they're discouraged. God had Haggai ask the people a question. And to me, I just see God's love in the question, okay? It's almost like God is trying to get at the root of their discouragement. And if you're discouraged today, perhaps you're discouraged because of one of these two reasons that we'll find revealed in this question in Haggai uh, chapter 2, verse 3. Haggai asked them on behalf of God, Who of you is left? Who of you is left who saw this house in its former glory? In other words, hey, are any of you old enough to remember Solomon's temple? Wasn't it amazing? And you look at yours and he says, How does it look to you now? Does it, does it just seem like nothing? Who of you remember the former temple and its glory? Does this one, does it just look like nothing to you? Well, you know, he reveals there are just a couple causes for discouragement. And I just want to talk to you about that today. If you're taking notes, uh, if you're in a Sunday school class, the first one should be real familiar with you, comparisons. Okay? The second one is just this. It's just a lack of progress. Comparisons and a lack of progress. Very certainly, these people are doing the same thing we do so often. They were comparing their start with someone else's finish. You know, we just started. Our temple doesn't look very good, and, and, and their finish was so much better than our start. And, and in fact, Bible scholars estimate that Haggai was probably around 70 maybe mid-70s, maybe 75, when he wrote this book, and he's prophesying to them. So he's 70, 75 years old, and which means that 50 years before they were in captivity, and, and he would have been old enough that he would remember that old temple, Solomon's temple, the amazing temple. And this one isn't amazing at all. And so there's this sense of comparison. Now, I don't know about you, but I get discouraged a lot of times when I compare where other people are, and I am not. And, and it would be like, you know, if you're a guy, you're like, well, you know, he, that, that other guy, he, he has an amazing job. He has just a fantastic car, and, and he has a fantastic house, 
and, and I hate my job, and my car barely runs, and I'm renting in a bad neighborhood, and, or maybe, maybe you're a lady, and you're comparing, and, and maybe not with some other lady, but maybe you're comparing your kids versus their kids, and, and her kids go to school in perfect matching outfits, and they go with baked goodies every single day, and they have college credits by the time they're in the fifth grade, you know, and my kids are barely dressed, and, and, and I, think, I think they had pants on today. I hope they did, you know, and oh, I forgot to give them their lunch money, and my kids are failing P.E., you know, and you just feel so bad, you know, that she eats whatever she wants to eat, and she weighs 110 pounds. I walk by Superior Dairy, look in the window, and gain 20 pounds, you know? And then, you know, maybe, maybe you're just a, a massive loser, and you just look on Instagram, and you're like, well, how come she got invited? Nobody invited me, and he's traveling again. They're going on vacation for the third time this year. I can't even afford to drive to the grocery store. You know, and, and, and she has more likes on her sunset picture, and my sunset picture is so much prettier than her sunset picture. You know, I, and I just get, I just look and I get discouraged. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? Well, you compared. And just like they compared, their pathetic attempt to rebuild Solomon's temple and, and with this new temple, and they're comparing to the glory of Solomon's temple. We're a failure. We feel so discouraged. And there's also a lack of progress. I mean, and this is just what they did. We're a month into this. It's not, it's not going well. We're trying so hard. We're not getting anywhere. And maybe that's how you feel. I'm, I'm going to go on a diet. I, I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to go on a diet. And so for a whole month, you eat nothing but kale and almonds and seaweed crackers, and you gain two pounds. You know, you're like, well, what happened? Man, I'm trying so hard. I'm working out, and it's not working. You start a business, you know, whatever. Two steps forward seems like three steps backward. Or maybe it's, it's like your, your whole spiritual lack of progress. You think, man, you know, I've been a Christian for years, all this time, and yet, man, I'm still saying bad words. We're headed on to church. We're going to go worship God. Somebody pulls out in front of you, you know, just right in front of you, and some bad words come out, and, and, and you, know, you cuss all the way to church, you know? And you're like, oh, wow, praise God for this morning. This is amazing, yeah? You, you'd, you'd think by this time I'd be better off. I'd wake up one day. Yeah, but I'm incredibly discouraged. I'm not where I thought I would be. She's ahead of me. He's doing greater than me. And, and, and they have this, and I don't have that, and I'm trying my best, and I'm not making progress. And so one day, you feel like these people did. I'm not even sure it's worth it. Not sure it's even worth it. Certainly, among you here and those listening online, there are those of you in some category of life right now. You're thinking what these people were thinking. I, I'm, I'm giving it all in my marriage. I, I'm trying to put up with this whatever person. They're not even engaged, you know, they, they care less, and I'm trying. I don't even want to try anymore. So discouraged. I'm giving it my best. I'm not getting anything back. Some of you with your kids, you're praying for your kids. You're giving them good, godly advice. You're doing everything you can to help make your kids make good decisions, and you're like, could they be any more stupid? You know, it's so discouraging because you tried everything you know and you try to, and they continue to make decisions that are just devastating and you can see where they're heading and you think, I could keep you from making a bad decision that you will live to regret and you don't know how to get them to listen to you and you're feeling really discouraged. Could be any number of things. 
spiritually. You're trying so hard to overcome that one sin. And, and you look back, you're going, I've been walking with Jesus all this time, and that one sin, I just can't seem to overcome that one sin. Maybe it's just not worth it. You wake up one day, you say, well, I tried. I'm not there. They, they're there, but I'm not there. I've worked harder. And you're just discouraged. You're just discouraged. I'll be real, real honest with you. A little bit risky to do this, I, but I want you to hear my heart. I don't want any, pa any letters. Pastor, you know, Jim, we love you. I, I, I'm not looking for that. I, I'm not telling you this to get that in return. I just want, I'm just telling you because I, I want you to be real. And so I, I need to be real if I want you to be real. So I have, I have to or none of this matters, okay? I've lived with a constant low-grade discouragement, sometimes middle-grade, sometimes high-grade, but it just never goes away. Always discouraged, feel discouraged because I feel like I never do good enough, okay? After the message today, my mind will not shut off until sometime this evening or maybe sometime uh, tomorrow with Donnie on the golf course, you know, who, who knows? It just won't shut off. Sometimes I can't sleep on Sunday nights because I'm thinking about what I should have said, what I could have said all day long. Oh, I just would have had a better, there would have been a better impact, a better help for people's lives if I would have said this. And I'm, I'm concerned about your spiritual growth. And I always want to say just the right thing. I feel a sense of divine responsibility for you. You see, Jesus was a good shepherd and we're the sheep. But another metaphor is that under Jesus, I need to be a good shepherd and the shepherd of this flock. And it's my job to help sheep follow Jesus faithfully. And sometimes it feels like I'm just coming up a little bit short in communicating the right thing to you. And I try so hard to help people have a spiritual growth God wants us to have. And then sometimes people just, you know, they're part of the body, and then all of a sudden they're caught up in sin and they just walk away. And they just walk away from their relationship with God and other believers. And I want to tell you, it just rips a piece of my heart out. I work hard on the messages, trying to be transparent with you, trying to keep your attention because I know you're like, well, it's getting a little bit late. It's getting a little bit long. So I work hard to try to bring the Word of God to life. I try to preach God's Word faithfully. I try to keep it Christ-centered. And then it's like people are like, oh, but the football game's starting, you know, forget this church, and you know. It, it just happens. It really does. And then our church doesn't deliver sometimes. And people are like, well, you know what? I was a part of a church, but I got hurt. And, uh, and people did this, and people hurt my feelings. And you know what? Sometimes we do that. And, and you're right. There have been so many times when we've been wrong. And I'll tell you what, it grieves me because we let somebody down and someone got hurt by something we said or something we did and all this kind of stuff. And so... That's where my discouragement comes from. I look back 23 years ago. I thought we were headed to the promised land at Grangeville and University, and it can bring discouragement that we haven't made more progress. I love what God is doing here in Layton, but there are nearly 75,000, maybe more now, people in Hanford who have no church of the Nazarene there. And I get discouraged. I say, God, why? Why? Is it me, God? Was I listening to you? Should I, should I resign and get out of the way? Is it time to turn it over to my Joshua? You say, well, why are you telling us this? I just, I just want to be on a level playing field, okay? So we can be depressed together, okay? <laughs> so we can all hear from God. Let me put it that way. Actually, I don't want to whine. I just want to tell you, we all live there. Amen. We all live there. 
And we all at some point, oh, they're doing this, and they're doing that, and I can't do this, and I can't do that, and I'm working so hard, and I don't see the progress that I want to see. And, and what do you do when you find yourself constantly discouraged? I want to show you what God tells his people to do when they find themselves themselves in this position. We're building a temple. It's not going well. It's never going to be as good as Solomon's temple. We're, we're trying to do the best we can, and the best is just not good enough. And, oh, God. God is so loving. God is so gracious and merciful and kind. He gives them the most loving and simple instructions. And to me, it's one of the most beautiful things in this little book. It just shows how much love God has for us, his people. Remember last week, they were like, well, we don't know how to build a temple. And God says, let me just make it really, really easy for you. And in case you weren't here last week, you know, you, well, you missed a lot, but, but you missed this because God just said, hey, it's just a one, two, three. Here's what you do. Number one, go up the mountain. Number two, bring down the timber. Number three, build the temple. Okay? That's pretty easy. Just here it is, people. Yeah, in case you weren't paying attention, here's what you do. Go up the mountain, cut down the timber, bring the timber down, and build the temple. Okay? That, that's what you do. And <laughs> I can say that all day, you know, how easy it is. And, and what we said last week is what you do is you do this. You choose the hard right over the easy wrong. It's not easy to, well, <laughs> I, I'll do what you told me to do. But it's, not, it's not easy. No, but I'll do what you told me to do. This week, we get discouraged. <laughs> what do we do, God? What do we do? Watch how loving God is. God is so amazing. Oh, wow. Wow. He, he talks first to the governor, then to the high priest, then to all the people. He tells them the same thing. Verse 4 of chapter 2, he says this, But now be strong, Zerubbabel. <laughs> be strong. Then he tells Joshua, be strong. Then he tells all the people of the land, be strong. What did he tell them to do? Okay, everybody say, be strong. But then he said something else, and work. Be strong and work. Why? Well, here it is again. He says, I, the Lord, am with you. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. What do you do when you're discouraged? Well, God says you do essentially two things when you're discouraged. <laughs> Be strong and do the work. Okay? If you weren't paying attention, if you're discouraged right now, what do you do? Huh? You be strong and you do the work. When you're discouraged, you want to give up, what do you do? God says, be strong and do the work. And the great news is, I don't, you don't, have to be strong on your own power. Yeah. You don't have to be strong in your own power. Wow. I mean, this is, this is just mind-blowing. God says to you, be strong and do the work. We live in New Testament times. You know what the New Testament tells me? Wow. When we're weak... His strength is made perfect in us. Yeah. That, 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 that's what he tells me. In other words, I don't have to be strong in my own strength. I have supernatural strength dwelling in me. And, and it, uh, we're also told this, that, that the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in me because I believe in him. And the same is true for you. I mean, when you feel weak, you don't have to be strong. In fact, when you can't do any more, when you're about to give up, that's when you are a perfect candidate for the strength of God to take over in your life. 
For him to be strong in you. Be strong in the Lord. Do the work. Be strong. Do the work. What do you do when you get discouraged? Be strong and do the work. Okay, you're getting there. Okay, I got some of you. Okay, notice he didn't say, talk the talk. No, he didn't say that. But do the work. He didn't say, dream the dream. He said, do the work. Notice he didn't say, compare your results. He said, do the work. What do you do when you're discouraged? You be strong in his power and do the work. Put down another stone. Put down another stone. Put down another stone. Didn't seem to make much a difference. What did you do? Be strong. Put down another stone. Put down another stone. But it's not working. Consistently do the last thing God told you to do. Consistently choose the hard right over the easy wrong. Put down a stone. Put down another stone. Put down another stone. Consistently do the hard thing. Yeah, it'd be easy just to go home. It would be easy to say it's hard. It would be easy to say, I didn't make much progress. But God says, be strong. Show back up. Be strong. Keep doing it. And this leads to a principle that I tell you what, I, I just try to live by. And, and the, the thing is, I tell myself all the time, and you need to tell yourself this as well, never forget it. Take it to the bank. Successful people do consistently what normal people do occasionally. This is something our current generation of young people really, really need to learn. What do you do? You show back up. You do the work. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Put down another stone. Put down another stone. And when you want to give up, what do you do? You be strong and you do the work. Be strong and keep praying even when you don't see results. You be strong. You continue to open up God's word. Seek him daily in his word. Uh, be strong and continue to do the right thing even when it seems like you're not getting anywhere. You be strong. You continue to show up and exercise, even when the numbers are going the wrong way. You be strong and continue to pay off your debt. If it's only $10 a month that you can do, you go in the right direction. You do it month after month, week after week, year after year. You continue to do the right thing. You be strong and continue to love other people even when they don't love in return. You, you be strong and bring your best when everyone else in the team is not bringing their best. You be strong and show honor even when the person over you is not acting in an honorable way. You be strong and continue to love your spouse even when your spouse is unresponsive. You be strong and continue to reach out to that person even when they do not hear you or let you in. You be strong, you continue to love your children and pray for your children, love your children, even when they don't stand for anything that you believe is right. You be strong. You show back up. You be strong. You stay in the game. You be strong. You never give up. That's exactly what I do. When I live with constant discouragement, I continue to say in the strength of God, I will be strong. I will show up. I will do the work. Every single week, here's what I do. I'll continue to pray, 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 pray. Continue to seek God on your behalf. Seek God. Seek God. I'll continue to study His Word. I'll continue to lead with every fiber in my body. I will preach Christ crucified risen and here to transform lives through the power of the Holy Spirit and we will continue to do it stone after stone after stone after stone. There's somebody here. Somebody here. Somebody listening. You're comparing. Well, I'm not there. I wish I was. I'm discouraged. I don't have progress. Show back up consistently do what other people only do occasionally. 
Put down another stone. Put down another stone. Put down another stone. Successful people do consistently what normal people only do occasionally. Just show back up. Do what God told you to do. Show back up. Obey God. Be strong in the Lord. Do the work. And here's, that's why God's word is so powerful to us. You see in Galatians 6, 9, when God tells us in the New Testament, he says, hey, you know, you guys, let us not become weary. In what? Doing good. In other words, don't become weary in doing the work. Why? Because at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. If we do not give up. If we do not give up, be strong and do the work. When will we reap a harvest? I don't know. That's not my job. Yeah, for some who are mentioned in Hebrews for their faith, they never lived to see the harvest reaped of the faith seeds they had planted. Some did, some didn't. But for those mentioned in Hebrews 11, they continued to show back up and put down another stone and be strong in the Lord and do the work. Now all that was a setup. Now for the punchline. You know, if I had ended the message here right now, basically what I would have done is send you out the doors with a go get them kind of message. You know, come on, pull up your bootstraps and, and get out there and keep trying. Well, that's, that's not a bad message, but it's incomplete. And I want to make sure I complete it before we go home today. God says, be strong and do the work. Now, why did he say we could be strong and do the work? Because he said, I am with you. This is the key to all of it. It's not that you do it on your own. It's that you do it with him. What God was going to show them is the most world-changing thing since the sin in the Garden of Eden. If, if you read ahead, this isn't in your notes, but it, you can read ahead in chapter 2, verses 6 through 9. Here's what God says. God says something they can't, they, they, can't, they can't wrap their minds around because they're living in Old Testament times. But God says this. He says the glory of this present temple is going to be way greater than the glory of the former temple. And they're going, hey, you know, some of us saw Solomon's temple. That ain't happening, buddy. No, 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 no. You must have misspoken, God. And God says, no, the glory of this present temple, the one you're, <laughs> the one you're building is going to be greater than the glory of the former temple. And they're going, no, it won't be. You see, even the secular historians say Zerubbabel's temple wasn't even close to Solomon's temple. There is no way. What are you talking about, God? What are you saying? They had no idea that their prophecy they were being given by Haggai was foreshadowing a great New Testament truth of the love of God. You see, all through the Old Testament, and you can take this to the bank as you study the Old Testament, all through the Old Testament, what happens in the physical is a picture of what will happen in the spiritual in New Testament times. It's a foreshadow. And God shows physically what he's going to do spiritually. And God shows naturally what he is going to do supernaturally. And here's how. It's just mind-blowing. God says, the glory of this present temple will be greater than the glory of the formal temple. Well, how could he possibly say that? Because God is going to do something they could not even imagine. I mean, here, here's the punchline. Don't miss this. In the Old Testament, people had to go to the temple and make a sacrifice in hopes of being made right with God. Let me say that again. In the Old Testament, 
people had to go to the temple and make a sacrifice, hoping that that would make them right with God. Now, the New Testament, oh, that's the mind-blowing part. I mean, God says something seems totally crazy. He says, you know, now you who are followers of Jesus, you are actually the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body, your body is the house where God dwells. Amen. The most amazing, mind-blowing thought, because everybody thought you had to go to the temple to experience God, and now God says, if you're a follower of my son Jesus, I actually dwell in you. Old Testament, you go to the temple, you make a sacrifice, you hope it might make you right with God. In the New Testament, God comes to you. He makes a sacrifice himself so you can be made right with him and the Holy Spirit dwells in you, his temple. So much more glorious than Solomon's. I don't know if you're getting this, you know. <laughs> I'm not going to give up until you get it, okay? This changes everything. Now you don't have to be strong and do the work on your own. You do it because He is with you. He is in you. And, and He, <laughs> greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. Oops, I went a little too far. Be strong in the Lord. <laughs> I want to make sure you get this because, yeah, I want to keep putting down a stone after stone after stone until you have this built into your life. The glory of this temple will be greater than the glory of the former temple. Jesus is the greater glory and the Spirit of Christ dwells in you. Amen. Every time you put down a stone in His name, you are glorifying Him. When you serve someone, He is being glorified. When you love someone, He is being glorified. When you forgive someone, he is being glorified. When you lift someone up in His name, He is being glorified. And, and, and here's why we should not be discouraged, because we are not alone. We don't have to go to a temple and make a sacrifice in hopes of finding God. He came to us. He gave His Son so that we could be right with Him. Therefore, Jesus dwells within those who are believers, and He is the greater glory. That's why you never have to be discouraged, because get this, He is with you. Be strong in the Lord. Do His work, for I am with you, declares the Lord. Therefore we know that He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion. And he says, let us not be weary in doing good and doing the work, because at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. If you're discouraged today, remember, God has come to you. He made the sacrifice so you can be right with him. And He is not just only with you, He is in you. Therefore, you can do everything He calls you to do. Everything He calls you to do. So be strong and do the work in the power of His 
Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, today, give us the courage to put down another stone. Lord, help us to trust you. Help us to be faithful. Help us to do it in your strength and to do it for your glory. God, I know that this morning there are those like me who maybe have had a kind of an ongoing, low-grade frustration. Not where I thought I would be. I thought I could be doing more. I'm not where she is. I'm not where he is. I'm trying and I'm not getting ahead the way I want to, Lord. Let them know they're not alone. Help us, Father, to do what you've shown us to do, to be faithful, to be strong, to do the work. Oh, loving Father, there are those who are very discouraged right now. Perhaps they're experiencing constant discouragement. And Lord, we need your help. We want to experience your strength to be faithful to you, trusting that you will finish in us what you started. God, I thank you for people who come expecting to hear from you. And God, I thank you that you are speaking to them today through your word. God, help us to be faithful to the last thing you showed us to do, to go up the mountain, to bring down the timber, to build the temple, to be strong in the Lord, to do what you've called us to do. God, we thank you that we don't have to do it on our own, but we do it with the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. I pray, God, that we would be encouraged because you dwell within those who know your son Jesus. Be the strength that we need to do what you called us to do. May Jesus be the greater glory who's glorified through our temples, our bodies. We live to bring glory to your name, Lord. Oh, Lord, as we've talked about doing the work, doing the work, staying in the game, being faithful, showing back up, and doing the work, we also realize that we only do the work when you call us to do the work. But when it comes to being made right with you, Jesus already did the work. You told us in your word, we're saved by grace through faith and not by works. Not by, not by works. Father, I, I grew up and, and I grew up in the church and thinking I have to be better, I have to try harder, I have to stop doing bad things, and, and I have to be really good so I'll be good enough for you, God. I had no idea there was no way I could ever be good enough for you, that even my smallest sin disqualified me from heaven. And so that's why I've come to understand that your love is so amazing. Because you no longer make me go to the temple and make a sacrifice. You came to me. You came to us. And you sacrificed your son Jesus, the Lamb of God, the final sacrifice. The sinless Son of God died in our place. But he didn't stay dead. No, God, you, <laughs> through your Holy Spirit, he rose from the dead that third day. So that anyone, and this includes anyone here listening, that calls on Jesus will be saved. All our sins forgiven. Our bodies become a house for you our God, our Father. We don't go to a building to experience you. You come to us, and we experience you moment by moment and every day. I just want to pause the prayer for a moment. Be faithful to the voice of the Holy Spirit here. Maybe there's someone or more than just someone who needs, to, needs this. You know it. Maybe your model has been religion. Go to church, try to, try to find God there. But listen to me. God has already come to you. That's how much he loves you. He gave his son Jesus, and when you call on him, he fills your life. He forgives your sins. He makes you brand new. And that's why some of you here today are listening to this online. You know it. And it's your time to say, yes, I surrender because Jesus gave his life for me. I receive that gift. I don't have to work for it. I just receive it. My only reasonable response is to give him my whole life. If that's you today... You're saying, yes, Jesus, forgive me. Yes, Jesus, I want to give my life to you. I want you to take all my life. I want to be your temple. You live in me. I surrender to you. Anyone here listening online, yes, Jesus, I surrender. The time is now. I surrender. If you'd lift your hands, I want to pray for you right now. Anyone? Anyone here? Yes. Anyone else? Yes. Okay, thank you. Everybody pray. Heavenly Father, forgive all my sins. Make me new. I believe Jesus came for me to seek and to save me, to die for me so that I could live for you. Fill me with your spirit so I could know you and serve you forever. My life is not my own. I give it all to you. I will be strong and do the work in the power of your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 God bless you.